Hello everyone, and welcome to a special bonus episode of 31 Days of Stargate, where I talk about Stargate Origins. I just saw it, just finished the movie a few minutes ago, and I'm here to give my thoughts. Now you're probably wondering, hey Justin, hasn't Stargate Origins been out for like six months now or something? Why did you, why did you wait so long to watch it? Well, I'm going to get to that. We all remember, or all of us in the Stargate fan base remember this Twitter campaign that the original creators of SG-1 um, put on this whole hashtag Stargate Now thing. And you can see it in the the title cards of all of my uh, 31 Days of Stargate videos. Uh, and essentially they did this to try and revitalize, to try and reignite interest in the Stargate franchise to hopefully get the franchise back, to get MGM to start creating new installments in the franchise again to do more with Stargate since it kind of abruptly ended uh, with the conclusion of Universe. Uh, and I was on board with this from day one. I wasn't much of a Twitter user, so I didn't participate in the campaign all that much, but I was on board with this for day one. Yeah, more Stargate. Woo. <laughs> let's get let's get Richard Dean Anderson back. Let's get Michael Shanks back. Let's get Amanda Tapping back. Let's get um, the Atlantis cast back, and let's just do this. Um, and it did kind of work. We did actually get, in conjunction with the campaign, a new installment in the Stargate franchise. The first new installment in the Stargate franchise in years. And that was Stargate Origins. Now, <laughs> the problem is not that they made a new Stargate thing. Because I would love a new Stargate thing. The problem is what they did. And this is why I waited so long to actually watch it, because what actually they were doing really didn't give me much hope. Essentially, Stargate Origins is a prequel movie, originally released as a 10-episode internet series, um, and then edited together into a feature film later on. And it tells... It's kind of like a prequel telling the backstory of Catherine Langford, one of the original instigators of the Stargate program in the United States Air Force. And first of all, like when I heard that, I was like, do we really need that? Do we really need that story told? And besides, how could she have gone through the gate? The, the trailers are making it look like she goes through the gate. That... That severely contradicts a whole bunch of stuff in the original movie and the series. Like, what the heck? And so, I, I wasn't really excited about it for that reason. And I also wasn't really excited because, again, I mean, you can do something... You can do great things on a low budget. Like, low budget does not automatically mean bad. I've seen some very cheaply made movies that are fantastic. But when it comes to Stargate, so much of the identity is in the other worlds and the other cultures and talented writers and directors and talented actors behind them. That's so much of the identity. So when you do this very low budget thing, it, it's just, you're, you're, you're not letting it be what it can be. Uh, it'd be like trying to do Star Wars on a low budget. I mean, so much of the identity is the other worlds, the other cultures, the talented writers, directors, and actors behind it. Like, you can't try and do Star Wars on a low budget, and it's kind of the same thing with Stargate. Uh, and then finally, the marketing. They really were not pushing the marketing for this at all. This got almost no marketing at all. And that told me that the studio had almost, that MGM had almost no faith in it. And when it looks like a studio doesn't have much faith in a project, it's kind of hard for me to have faith in it either. Um, now, sometimes when a studio doesn't have faith in a project, it can still be successful. I mean, to use Star Wars as an example again, but still, like, it just, there was no marketing for this. It, it didn't really look like they cared, and if they don't care, why should I? Uh, and so it came out, it was released as the 10 episode, uh, internet series, and I saw the first three episodes, the first three or four episodes, uh, and it really didn't hook me. It just wasn't great, and then they released it as the feature film, and because I was subscribed to that whole Stargate Command thing, I got a copy of the feature film edit for free, uh, and I just finally 
force myself months and months and months later today i finally forced myself to watch that whole thing and i have now seen all of stargate universe and um this movie's really bad <laughs> my goodness this movie sucks this movie sucks so much oh my goodness okay the first of all to get the obvious out of the way the low budget here really freaking shows this movie looks like a bunch of YouTubers got together in an abandoned warehouse and shot it on DSLRs. I mean, with almost no lighting or anything. Like, it, this is one of the cheapest... This is definitely the cheapest looking thing I have seen in a long time. There's a movie called, uh, from the 90s, called The Brothers McMullen, which is, is a very... It was a very successful independent film. And it... Um, it won Best Film at Sundance, and it was very successful. It was made for $2,500, which is almost no money when it comes to filmmaking, right? And that movie is very, very good, and it doesn't look cheap. Like, it looks like a movie, you know? It doesn't look cheap. So how come this movie which definitely had a much bigger budget than two thousand five hundred dollars it actually had a budget how come it looks so freaking cheap how come it and because it and it's not just how it looks it's also what they can do because they had such a low budget they barely do anything with this story there's only like three main locations and that's it and the amount of actors, the amount of characters in this, like, scenes where there should be a crap ton of people, because logically a crap ton of people would be there. There's only, like, five, <laughs> because they could only afford that many actors. Like, okay, everything in this movie is absolute minimal effort. There's only, like, the main plot starts almost immediately when the movie begins with no setup whatsoever it fully depends on you knowing who these characters are before you watch the movie like i did if you don't none of this will mean anything to you at all um and then just every single little thing it's really hard to explain in words you just have to watch it to see for yourself every little thing in this script is like the laziest most minimal effort it, you know when you know student films like as a as a film student myself uh i make these mistakes a lot uh student films will often when in terms of the writing they'll do the obvious thing things will be very on the nose they'll be very like the obvious thing you know like oh yeah if you were going to take this story in this direction you would obviously do that not necessarily cliches but just the most obvious easy thing to write and student films do that a lot. This movie feels like a student film. Like, every single thing in the script is either a huge cliche or just the laziest, most minimal effort thing they could have written. Literally, the only thing in this movie that is not lazy is this one aspect where the main Guauld, who is sort of the main villain... She actually, like, isn't really a complete villain. She's kind of nuanced that way. She's, like, half villain, half not. She's not really a villain. She's just someone who has a goal and is trying to accomplish it. And that is kind of interesting. Uh, because the Gwauld are usually just straight up over the top evil. And within the tone of Stargate, it, really, it, it usually works. But it actually shows that she cares a little bit about her people that she's enslaved. And... She doesn't really think of them as slaves. It kind of suggests that, but they barely do any, anything with it. So even when they do do something unique and clever, they barely do anything with it. Like, everything in this movie, in terms of the writing, writing is not limited by budget. Writing is not limited by budget. Everything in this movie's writing, everything in this script is the laziest, most obvious cliche thing you could possibly do in this scenario. It, it, it honestly feels like someone, it's almost like they went to, they hired a writer, gave them like two weeks to write the script, which is almost nothing. 
gave him like two weeks to write the script, but this guy knew nothing about Stargate, so he just watched the original movie and nothing else, and was like, okay, I guess that's that's all I'm gonna watch before I have to write this script, and he... Because... Okay, first of all, the obvious. Catherine Langford couldn't have gone through the gate. If you watch the original movie, if you watch all the episodes of SG-1 that she's in, she could not have gone through the gate. It's very clearly established that in the original movie that she wishes she could go, but she hasn't. And she's learning all of this for the first time, just like all the other characters are. And it's that way throughout the entire Stargate franchise. Whenever you see her in the original movie, whenever you see her in SG-1... She's learning all this stuff for the first time while all the other characters are. So how, so anyone, any Stargate fan going into this movie is going to be thinking, how on earth are they going to explain not only Catherine going through the gate at one point, but also Kasuf, who in the original movie acts like he's never seen Earthlings before, but apparently in this movie... With When he's younger, he does? Well, you know how uh, Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith... Uh, again, I'm using a lot of Star Wars analogies in this. <laughs> I'm sorry. In Revenge of the Sith, they needed to explain how C-3PO didn't remember anything from the prequel trilogy because <laughs> Lucas realized, oh crap, uh, that I wrote the original trilogy or the original trilogy was written... <laughs> without this in mind, so I need to explain why C-3PO doesn't remember all this. So he just casually has a character say, oh, make sure that, make sure uh, C-3PO's mind is wiped. Make sure, make sure his memories are wiped or whatever. And it seems really lazy and out of nowhere, and it's obviously just damage control trying to explain away a, a plot hole that would have been created otherwise. They do that exact thing in this movie. Catherine Langford and Kasuf's memories are both wiped at the end of the movie. The villain erases all their memories of what happened in the movie so that they don't remember it in later on in the original movie and in SG-1. Oh my gosh! If you're going to create plot holes and you have to do something ridiculously lazy and ridiculous in order to explain away those plot holes or prevent them, don't do this story! I mean, you have... You're MGM. You are trying to do a quick, simple, low-budget Stargate thing just to see whether or not it's a viable franchise again. Whether or not people are interested in this franchise again. Do something with that. Don't... This is one of the worst stories you could have chosen to do that. We did not need a Katherine Langford prequel movie, especially one... That creates plot holes in the overall franchise. You're creating problems unnecessarily. Like, if you're going to do a, a simple, a low-budget Stargate thing just to see, just to kind of revamp interest in the franchise, then how about the Wraith Replicator War? The, the Wraith were fighting the Replicators. How about sh doing a small little low-budget thing where there's this one little village on one planet and they're having to deal with that and they're having to deal with the replicators and everything and, and you know, it, it focuses on a few new characters, ones we don't know about and it's just a simple story about these guys in this village dealing with the Wraith Replicator War or, or maybe the Jaffa, like maybe, maybe make a, a story about this one Jaffa working for whatever Gould who finds his faith tested, and it's just a simple story about him, you know, dealing with the challenge to his faith. Like, there's so many better stories you could do if you're trying to do a simple, low-budget Stargate thing to, re to reignite interest in the franchise. There's so many better stories you could have chosen. But instead, you did a Katherine Langford prequel film that causes continuity problems in the overall franchise. And you try to do... And this movie... Uh, the main plot of this movie... I'm going to spoil it because it's freaking stupid. Uh, the, the, the Germans kidnap Catherine Langford's father because they want to join forces with the ghoul to help Hitler take over the world with Gwald technology. It's pretty dumb.
And they that whole thing of this Guauld in this movie joining forces with Nazi Germany is abandoned like 10 minutes before the movie ends. Just... And she just decides, yeah, we're not going to do this anymore. And she erases Catherine Langford and Kasuf's memories. And her father's memories. Just out of nowhere. It's so out of nowhere. It's obvious. It is so obvious that when they were writing this, they were writing this like it was a standalone movie without any previous material that this takes place before and like right when they were almost done they were like oh crap there's three movies and 17 tv seasons worth of stuff that takes place after this <laughs> we have to make this fit somehow and so they just did the quick simple fix of having their memories erased it's so freaking lazy you could have done so much with this movie but you did everything you could to be as lazy as you possibly could having a low budget is not an excuse you can make really good movies on low budgets i've seen very good movies on low budgets the problem is not the budget the problem is the script the script for this movie is so lazy it's it, this movie i can tell i just saw it i just finished watching it before recording this so uh, I don't know how I'm going to feel yet, but I can tell you it is very likely that this is going to be the Stargate thing that I forget about and have to remind myself, oh yeah, that was a thing. You know how Solo, a Star Wars story, again, another Star Wars analogy. Why am I used doing so many Star, Star Wars analogies? You know how Solo, a Star Wars story, people are already going like, oh yeah, that happened. <laughs> you know, like, or or the Clone Wars movie, oh yeah. That happened. You know, I have a feeling this is going to be that Stargate thing. I'm going to remember Stargate Infinity more than this. And Stargate Infinity is awful. And Stargate Infinity isn't even canon, so you don't need to remember this. But this tries to be canon. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So yeah, sorry I didn't get into the story much. But really, all you need to know is... Catherine Langford and her father are studying the Stargate, as established in the original franchise. A Nazi guy shows up and is like, I'm going to steal this thing. And he kidnaps her father. They go through the gate. She goes through through uh, with, with after them to try and rescue her father with an extremely annoying comic relief. And this love interest, who's so bland and boring, I have to remind myself what his name is. I mean, <laughs> and... You can pretty much predict everything that happens from there. Like, this movie is so lazy. And so... Minimum effort. You can predict almost everything that happens from there. And yeah, I was able to predict almost everything that happened in this movie in terms of what direction things were going and in terms of, like... Uh, and in terms of what would happen. The whole memory erase thing, I predicted that because I was like, yeah, there's no way they're going to be able to wrap this up and make it fit without pulling the whole memory erase thing. And yeah, they did that. So, I mean, this movie is so predictable that, honestly, I can just tell you that basic setup for the plot. And you, and if you're a Stargate fan, you can pretty much think of what happens from there. And you'll be surprisingly close to what actually happens in the movie. Like, it... And the, the most frustrating thing about this, the absolute most frustrating thing about this is that now, we, this may have ruined our chances to get Stargate back. The entire purpose of MGM making this movie slash internet series, depending on how you watched it, the entire point of them making Stargate Origins was to see if Stargate was a is if people were still interested in Stargate, if it was a profitable franchise again, if people, if they made new Stargate stuff, if people would see it. And the fact that it was so bad and was such a huge failure because nobody liked it, I haven't seen a single positive review of Stargate Origins. Um, you know, the fact that so many, the fact that it was such a failure 
and the, and the entire purpose of it was to see if we could bring back Stargate, this may have ruined our chance to bring back Stargate. This may have ruined our chance to get Stargate back. And that is the most frustrating thing about this whole movie to me. Because Hollywood, when they try something and it fails, they don't try again. They rarely try again. This might have been our only chance to get Stargate back. And they blew it. Stargate Origins has some good moments here and there, but overall, it's a bad movie. It's a bad movie. It's an insult to how brilliant and creative and clever the Stargate franchise is. And it really sucks that we might have blown our one and only chance to get Stargate back. Hopefully they try again. I mean, the, the feature film edit of this uh, was titled Stargate Origins colon Catherine, which implies that they're considering if this was successful doing other Stargate Origins things. So it is possible they may try again. And if they do try again, hopefully we'll get something better. But until then, unfortunately, it looks like Stargate's dead. And that is sad. I'm Justin. Thank you for watching. Uh, and yeah, hopefully Stargate isn't dead.